I chose the story about mochi, which is the Japanese tradition of pounding rice to make treats for New Year's. I love anything that has to do with tradition, family, and food, and learning about other cultures. And we'll have conversations around our own holiday table, saying things like, why do we eat this every year? And I'm my really most comfortable when I'm around my family who know me so well. So it's fun to reflect on where traditions came from, especially when it brings us back to our roots. And, and then we'll be making another round of mochi, so just pace yourself, okay? <laughs> a community center in Madison Heights. This is a Japanese mochisuki New Year's celebration, Detroit style. Put on some gloves and roll. Members of the Japanese American Citizens League are making and eating mochi made from a gooey rice paste. We created a lot of different ways to have it. We have it. Uh, the way I grew up eating it was with shoyu and sugar. Shoyu, that's soy sauce. Fried, and I have a frying pan actually, so if you want to fry some. We have kinako, uh, the, the uh, soybean flour with sugar and a little salt, and you roll it in there. One thing I remember is because it, it stretches if you pull it, and it, I, th I think it has something to do with the longevity of your life. It's, but my memory is kind of fuzzy, so... Mochi suki goes back a thousand years. In Japan, the celebration can go all day. The rice cakes take center stage to music and activities for the kids. The rice harvest is in the fall, right? So then the celebration of New Year's is a big deal, so I, I think that's kind of related to it, too. Is it good? Very good. I'm uh, very fond of mochi. Like lutefisk in Sweden or the fruitcakes of the Western world, mochi returns every holiday season. Some love it, some don't. Can you make this size of mochi? Oh, yeah, okay. you grab that. But with mochi, it's not just the texture, but the danger a choking hazard if you're not careful. Eat it, chew it good. Big five, chew it good. <laughs> oh, chew it good. Huh? Wow. I've never had it like this before. This oh, why don't you have it in that soup? Me. Well, this is ozoni. This is the uh, New Year's soup that, um, and it has a lot of. It has carrots and tofu <laughs> and fish cake and lotus root. The mochi sits in the bowl like a matzo ball. This is just the second year the Citizens League has held mochi suki in Detroit, even though the group has been here more than 70 years. And it started out as a support group of obviously Japanese Americans and it turned into a more of a civil rights focus organization and we have chapters everywhere including obviously here in Detroit. The Detroit chapter started when a lot of people who came out of the camp relocated to Detroit and at its peak I understand there were about 400 members. Mary Kamidoy was born in California, held in an internment camp in Arkansas during World War II. She's long retired from Ford Motor Company, but remembers Mochi Suki as a child. All the time that we were making mochi, the kids just played around with it. Our parents made it every year and had friends come over. And so, you know, and I'm one of these, I didn't eat it, I didn't like it. So I crabbed every time we were molding the thing, ma! I don't even eat the thing. Why do I have to come home and do this? She said, Mary, just keep molding it. Molding mochi, that's the easy part. You need people to pound the rice, swinging a big mallet over and over again. For you to pound, that's a job. It's like my dad used to say, if you don't pound right, you will hurt your back. And then the one that had to turn it, if you don't time it right, the mallet will come down on your hand or your head. Technology to the rescue, the mochi-making machine. Mary's brother-in-law found one in Los Angeles. He brought it home, and my sister said, come on over, you got to see this machine, Mary. It's really funny. I will eat one or two, but that's it. Not because I like it so well. I just eat it because it's just custom. 